Hey everyone, this is John with the Bass Tank. We're throwing a, throwing a big old brush hog today. Listen, we've got the perfect storm for spawning fish. Full moon tonight. The water temperatures were 70 degrees yesterday. A little cold front today. So the water's down to about 58 degrees. It's dropped to about 12 degrees, but it's going to warm back up. And uh, we're on a little lake. A muddy, muddy, muddy lake. A lot of people are scared of the muddy, muddy water. I love the muddy water. Putting on a big bait. We're going to be flipping to the bank bringing it back we're gonna guess these fish are gonna be from zero to three foot deep and uh, we're gonna try to get some bed fishing in for you guys today muddy water seems to me like they're uh, they're kind of staying away from these areas and they, instead of coming right here they're back right there we'll find out you see that you see that bundle of junk up there I've been getting a lot of bites around around that junk That fish will bite a lot like crappie, where they just thump, and then it disappears. But, you know, you give it to them a couple times in the same spot after a bite. Today, and they warm up, we'll get, we'll get some fish to come back to these. Nope, he didn't come back. He just popped it and popped it when I hopped it. You know, something, something I get asked a lot about, and, uh, it, it just kind of occurred to me about how it correlates with, with you deer hunters out there is the water temperature during the spawn. And, you know, a lot of the guys that are in the know of the deer hunting know that it's, it's not about temperature as much for the rut, but a lot of it has to do with lighting and, and things like that. And, and bass, bass are the same way. You know, one of my biggest secrets is February, March, Oklahoma, most of the spawn goes on, you know, the majority around April, uh, May time period, but I love to get up in February, March, and find those first big females that move up. They don't care as much about water temperature as they know about the moon phase and, and just the time of year, the, the, the light penetration and things like that that are going on. So uh, never, never forget in the springtime to just fish the backs of the creeks. Always go to the very shallow spots. You might find some of your biggest females starting to spawn a month ahead of everybody else. By the time that you start hearing the fish are spawning, you've already kind of missed the big, the big boat. Uh, now, that is different when it comes to big lakes that have large populations where they have large waves of fish come moving in. But in, in, in general, some of your biggest fish, like today, if you came out and you hadn't been out, you look at the temperature, the temperature's 58 degrees. Well, uh, common knowledge is that bass spawn around 72 degrees. Well, it's true. This water temperature yesterday was 70 degrees, uh, and it will warm back up by the end of the day when the sun hits. But it didn't stop these fish from, from, from spawning. Uh, the moon is going to be uh, full moon tonight. These fish are 100%. They're going to look to do it. And you always want to be in front of a fish. You know, I don't want to be out here. Uh, if the fish, if I know the fish are looking to spawn, they're coming to the bank. So I'm going to be up, up, up on the banks waiting for them to come to me. So don't don't forget about that, you guys. If it's the right time of year, you look and the, and the grass is green and the, and the red buds are blooming and the dogwoods are blooming and, and the Bradford pears are out blooming. Uh, and you know that there's spring in the air, you're starting to see snakes and turtles. Somewhere on that lake, those fish are starting to spawn. It's just your job to find out what portions of those lakes. You're going to look for the most stable environment, water flow. You want it stable. Not a lot of water flow, not a lot of up and not a lot of down. You want areas where the wind's not blowing as much. Uh, you want areas that will, will retain heat. And so there's a lot of little things with retaining heat when it comes to big objects like big logs rock things of that nature but when you find all that stuff and put it in the right category there will be a spot on these little lakes that year after year it may only be a hundred yard stretch that the big females come in and they move up and they spawn first and that's when it gets really fun just a bit outside yes that's what i'm talking about don't you love it an hour and a half without a bite you send them sailing over the side of the boat, ties your lures together. That's how it's done right there. There we go. There we go. Finally. Got me looking like a crazy man over here, swinging and swinging and swinging. Hey, look, I know how to catch a fish. That's a nice three pounder. Pulled him right out of that, uh, 
The old brush bog. Man, I've been having, I probably swung and missed it six to, I don't know, maybe even ten times down this bank. And finally put it in one. He held on to it long enough. Let's see if that, see if that starts a trend. So here's what's neat. That fish right there is obvious, solid three pound male. Came out of this grass mat right here. So instead of going down the bank during the spawn, I'm gonna go right back in that hole and see if there's a big female sitting in there. There we go. Take that one in a tournament every day, all day. Five of those. Looking at the belly, see if it's a female. She's pretty though, isn't she? You know, listen, we've been fishing for going on three hours now. It's been tough, swinging and missing a lot of little bucks that are bedding. And, and this little hole right here just looked perfect. Eight foot hole, calm water, a little bit warmer. This lake's been dropping a lot. And so these fish are, that are wanting to move up and spawn, they're not pushing into the shallow, shallow stuff. They're staying a little bit on the deeper edge. And I was just talking about how that I felt like this area, my gut said this area right here is gonna have a bite. So I slowed down a little bit and uh, that's what she gave us. Put her back and let her grow up. Good three and a half, three and three quarter pounder. better in that dirty water. Cam up in, flipping, flipping, flipping. My bait took off about three feet about as fast as it could be. I set the hook. The hook never even came out of the plastic. Plastic was shooting over the boat. That's bed fishing this time of year. Can't see. It's too muddy to sit there and see. So I flip back in there, just drug it along, drug it along. And this looks like the male. It could be the female, but I'm going to pitch back in there and see if I can catch another one. Starting to get bit. Starting to get bit. Oh shit, I followed my little thing. It ain't a long bass, but it's a heavy bass. It's a heavy fish. Look how short it is. Thick, back, strong. It's a good fight. You look back in this little bitty pocket here, and it's isolated. Wind can't blow north, south, east, west can't blow in there. But like I was talking about, these fish like to spawn where there's some light penetration for their eggs. So the the most the, the 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 lightest brightest spot that's hidden back there is right there. And we flip right back there. You can see that sun shining right there. And I just pulled a you know solid solid male out of out of there. Don't know if there's a female back in there, but pitch in there a couple times and see. But it's exactly right where it was supposed to be. And we found them the way we said we we're going to find them. Still took some bites to like tune it in. But Completely confirmed. This is this is the yes. This is the no. You know, even though I got, I'm not fishing right now. What exactly I found them doing? It looks right. So I'm going, I'm still testing things out. Still trying things out. It's a nice big log, all isolated. Seeing if something's you know up bedding on it.
See what I know is that little pocket there is really super shallow. I mean, I, we can, but about about right at that point, there's some depth that picks back up over there. And uh, honestly, the way the wind's blowing, I'm probably gonna fish down this way and come back and fish because that wood right there is where I really feel like the five pounders are gonna be living. And I can come back and fish this with my boat nose into the wind and not, you know, not lose boat control. Another one. Another one. Now we're putting them on them. How many, how many fish is that in the last little 30 minutes here? We put a, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, or maybe seventh one in the boat. Lost three more. You got to stay with it, man. We got them figured out now. There he is. Get him. Lucky he wasn't a 10 pounder. That's what I was hoping he was. <laughs> Got him. It's not that big, but they're fun to catch, fun to chase down. We did the dance. We did the live scope dance. Fast tank system. Another one in the boat. So good to see. See that in the live scope right there? Mm hmm. Got him. There we go. Now we're on fire. He's doing the dance. Let me go, let me go, let me go, let me go. That's a better one. Better one. Call him food. Let him grow up and new little. He's gonna eat it though. Got him. Got him. We need to get ourselves into some bigger fish, but this is how it's done. <laughs> this is what dreams are made of right here. <laughs> one of these days. One of these days will make some perfect for a better be back in that. Always fun to explore new areas, places you've never been, things you've never fished. Use your skills to find and locate fish. Like that one. So it's down at the bass tank. You know, we're, we're fishing for bed and fish, but uh, we're absolutely using our electronics still. We used our mapping to go way up a creek I've never been in and find a little deep hole. And uh, knew that these fish were going to be living in these deep holes, and we're just picking around, using our using our electronics to find our te temperature. Saw the temperature jump up about five degrees. Went from a one foot flat to ten foot hole, and this is what you get. Springtime. That's a good one. He rudely interrupted my our conversation. Bass guys 
boat and house. He's gonna have all the tools that you can, that you can think of. That he knows when to use every single one of those tools. It's a big one. Still fun. Let him grow up. Oh, we're good. We're, we're our day's about over. Cameraman's got to go homeschool. He's got to go what? Homeschool. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of cool because now we're not competing. As they say, we've come to the end of the road. We've had a fun day on the water today. Fun spring day. You know, we've got full moon tonight. We had muddy, muddy water. We predicted that these fish would be up making their beds. And they were. And it, it took a big old brush off, half ounce weight, getting into the bank to, to get these fish found and located and, and caught. You guys, listen, hopefully this video will tell you, do not be intimidated by muddy water. Matter of fact, if there's muddy water, most of the time I'm able to know exactly where to pinpoint and cast. And once we had it figured out today that these fish, you know, this water's been dropping. These fish did not want to get up in those shallow flats that they typically get up and spawn in. But if you could find a channel swing, any little nook and cranny that was next to some deep water, that was next to those shallow spawning flats, those fish were just bedded up one after another after another. Might have to get five, six, seven, eight bites right in a row. Really enjoyed ourselves out here today. Uh, stay tuned for more videos some tips and techniques you know don't don't be afraid to send us some comments and and, and questions and, and check us out on the bass tank.com and uh just want to thank everybody for watching